everyone and welcome to the latest in the Haven Helpful Hints video series. We're look, today we're looking at engines. I'm joined by Simon French from French Marine and Ben Suckliff Davis from Marine Surveyor, who we've seen in the past. We've dragged him back out again for another one. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about inboard engines and I'll now pass over to Ben and Simon who will take us through it. So we've had a little chat and it's quite interesting to know that uh, with Volvo almost everything now is coming as an indirect engine, whereas in the past there was a, a, a great range and the great options uh, in that case. That's right. We've we've moved on away. Well, we've moved away from an awful lot of cooling issues we had with the raw water cooled engines, yep. some of the sealing issues and some of the rotting issues that they had, and we've gone into a fresh water cooled variant. Loads of additional features with it where you can actually add in chlorifiers, you can add in hot water tanks, hot water takeoffs, etc. And we've upgraded lots of parts about it. So with indirect systems, obviously it's important to use the right type of antifreeze. Yes. Do you, as a manufacturer, recommend a, 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 a frequency of changing that? We're using a specific VCS coolant, Bulbo recommend. It's every three to five years um, we've been looking at the cooling circuit. So there's no damage or anything, any issues internal yeah. of the cooling circuit. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, do you have anodes in your... Uh... We, we don't. We've moved away from anodes. The technology with the cooling, the liquids, the chemicals that are inside the system, we just don't need them now inside right. the engine itself. And we actually unbond the sail drive or the actual gearboxes yeah, I, I away noticed. from the engine to stop any any need yeah. for any anodes inside. So it's interesting. I noticed on here we've actually got what looks almost like a piece of plastic, is it? It is a plastic shim to stop that any continuity across from the sail so, drive from the engine. So again, it's important if people are doing bonding of anodes, uh, uh, it's important they don't actually bond it to the engine. If you were installing one of these in the aftermarket, there are instructions to make sure you don't put it at the wrong places for bonding. Yeah, and that's really important. That's right. And then obviously on a sail drive, you've got the leg, which we've obviously got here, and the seal. Mm -hmm. um, there's an awful lot of chatter on, on YouTubes and Facebooks of, of replacement of seals. Yep. Um, um, what is the actual manufacturer's recommendation? Recommend every seven years. Right. Um, we have seen customers who are fantastic and they'll say they've got 15 years or more out of them, that's great, but actually it does keep your investment afloat, so we recommend the seven years. And that then, when you do the, that seal, you would replace the mounts, I guess, at the same time, would you? If the mounts are needing it, then yes. Yeah. The first set, first service in the first seven years, maybe not, because the mounts will be lasting about 10 to 12, right. maybe 14 years, yeah. if, if you haven't spilt things like diesel on them or any oils, yeah. etc., because they are rubber after all. Yeah. Um, but we, we would look at those... A uh, Volvo trained technician will be looking at those items when you're actually servicing. Because I did notice that, uh, unlike some manufacturers, you've actually got uh, uh, mounts with bells on which do reduce that massive problem of uh, contamination onto the mounts. It helps. It yeah. certainly helps. This one here is actually quite important as well, isn't it? So you've got your two mounts there, and then right. this one is the uh, yoke to support the gearbox with the sail drive? Yeah, uh, ordinarily on, a, on an engine which has got a gearbox, for example, you would have four mounts, one at each yeah. corner to suspend the engine. Now we've moved away from that and we haven't really got the, the application for it, so we've got the, the single mount at the rear to actually suspend the engine. Right, that's so quite simple, end. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the actual leg itself, I was noticing down here, you, you've obviously isolated this from this, so you've then got an anode on the leg, yes. and then you've got another anode on, on the actual uh, propeller system. Yep. Are uh, they independently... Um... No, they will, they will be connected via continuity. Uh, above, obviously, on the engine, you've got the plastic shims to stop to the engine, but yeah. the actual sail drive itself is protected with this anode, and if you'd like, then you consider this as a secondary anode. Right. Um, you can have options with net, without the propeller, fixed blade, folding blades, and yeah. at that point, you would maybe not have the, the extra anodes. But, but there are options. Some of the earlier generations, did they used to have this isolated from the leg? Some of the earlier... Um, uh, sour drives, they did. Yeah. Um, we moved away from that and we ended up with an isolation system to try and mitigate the electrolysis yeah. and marinas. Because like it's that. some of the things I've seen in some of the early problems where, where those anodes are wasted and then the legs volunteer. That's so right, yeah, the, the leg often gets hit after. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's fantastic. What's also I noticed was the fact that when these engines are like this, it's, it's lovely and easy to work on them. Um, the filter in this case is, is tucked down over the side here, the oil filter. That's right. Um, there are options, I understand, where you can actually have this now moved remotely? 
Volvo Penta don't necessarily offer an option, but most engineering companies like us ourselves, we manufacture a solution so you can remote them out to. Um, and then oils, you've got the main engine oil, which I noticed you've got around here, you've got the filter and the dipstick, which is pretty noddy proof in the sense it's yellow. Yep. Um, well, Volvo also offer a, 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 a suction tube blower down for making it easy to service. Yeah. So just underneath the oil filters, oh, yeah. to the side, you'll, you'll see, see there's that. actually a straw which will go to the lowest point on the sump. Yep. Therefore, to get the most oil out of the engine on during service. Yep. Next to it, you've got the oil filter, and then you can remote mount these oil filters with applications depending on what exactly the manufacturer yeah. boat builders are going for. And then the same with the fuel filters if you have to. There's a lot of a lot of boat builders. They put the engine in. And then you physically can't get to these things, so that, you're just they think a little bit more yeah. about things like filters, but that's really interesting stuff. So that's the engine oils, and then the yep. gearbox yeah. oil, so with the engine oil you'd recommend a, a seasonal service. Seasonal service, and the same with the sail drive, because at the point at which you're going to be servicing the, the engine, you're there, you would also check, make sure the seals aren't damaged, there's no nothing around your propellers to damage the seals underwater. Right. Sometimes you're going to be doing a service in the boat, in the water, and you can actually suck through this tube. Um, Volvo, for example, recommend every three services to actually drain from the bottom, which is when the boat right. will be on hard standing. But you can actually fully service the, yeah. the engine using this dipstick. And is this, obviously the oil for this gearbox and the leg is all one component? That's right, it doesn't yeah. go from the engine through to the south. Yeah, so it's, it's all one unit, lovely, that's fantastic. So this is the, the D6, That's right. the latest generation of D6, I guess. This yes. has been in so many different production boats across all Really, markets. really great uptake, really fantastic shaft drive, um, out drive, aqua drive as the Volvo like to call it. And on top of that, we've also got the IPS pods as well, which this same engine can be applicable for the, all three generations of styles. Right. If you'd really like to include the jet drives too, then there's that as an option as well. Okay, so again, uh, the principles of it are indirect cooling mm -hmm. and I know this obviously you've got the water intake that comes up to quite a large strainer here on the front which is nice right. and visible and again you've got the uh, the drain downs but you haven't got anodes I guess there are anodes in this model oh, right, okay. there are anodes in this model there's an awful lot more surface area to cover because yep. of the amount of heat that's generated but if you come this way for example this particular model we've got an aqua drive so we're taking water up through the drive right. keeping the drive cooled and the bottom half through the actual drive itself, you have a drain down nipple for the salt water cooling, raw water cooling. Yep. Through to the actual water pump, it's an impeller driven pump, as, as per standard, an awful lot of marine applications, and then you're quite right, you're going onto the strain. Right. But along here, you've also got some quite large coolers, and there are some anodes uh, tucked away at the time. Right, so they're quite important, what, every year is it? Again, yearly. Yearly. Some marinas, depending on uh, what we'd class as a hot marina, you might be doing every six yeah. months. And they will just purely be zinc, they won't be aluminium anodes? Um, it's, it's a blend, um, probably primarily there towards the zinc. Right, okay. There's no seacock with this type of system, is there? No, there isn't. So you're totally relying on the water pump as the shut-off, I guess. If you like, yeah. yeah. And then you say about it's a, it's a common rail diesel? This is a common rail, fully electronic engine. You are, it is, it's designed specifically so you can have their electronic controls. They've got all of their, their vessel configuration, so it's electronic vessel control, EBC. Um, this is an EBC2 engine. Right. Um, yeah, great piece of kit. Yeah. And, and from a servicing point of view, it's an annual service? Annual service, um, uh, highly recommended because of the environment we're working in yeah. and all of the hydroscopicness of some of the fluids. Definitely worth doing every year. One, one of the ones I love about annual services is would you say do the service at the start of the winter and have flush everything through and change the oils then? Or would um, you say. It's nice to do it that way. Yeah. Very often it depends how you use the boat. For example, at French Marine, we do a winterisation and a recommission service. Yeah. So you would see us in the winter to where the boat is made safe yeah. um, for any freezing or, or cold conditions, etc. So you can be flushing the salt water circuit through. And then in the spring, we're going to recommission the engine. At that point, we'll finish the other half of the service and hopefully you'll enjoy your season and not see us again because yeah. you won't have a problem. But would you change the oil at the winter? The oil will be done at the winter. Because yeah, that's, that's like my old man and, and, and your father, Mike, who I've known for years, Sorry. always drilled into me that you get rid of all the contaminants that have been exactly. created. So that's really important. A lot of people don't do them until the spring. We have the uh, the, the uh, aqua drive, as you call it now, yep. and again, a very different beastie compared to the sail drive or shaft drive. 
Yep. Um, a lot of people get quite confused about what bellows are and stuff. And, and so, yeah. are, they, are we on a, a couple of years servicing on these? Or every three years. Every three years. Every now. three years. So, this is a new, a new DPI drive, it's a fully yep. hydraulic, electronically controlled drive. Yep. Um, it's got some sensors in there for condition of oil and making sure temperatures, etc., are all really tip top condition. It has got bellows, which is a traditional system. Exhaust bellows are tucked underneath, yep. drive bellows, and there's also a, a junction on there for the water going through the drive, as I explained earlier, yep. right through in in. And a gear shift? Gear shift electronic. Electronic, wow, yeah. so that's a, that's a cable that you've got rid of that it, always used to leak. It literally <laughs> is a cable. Uh, they've got, there's an awful lot of work been done into sealing. There are specifications yep. into making sure this is sealed for underwater use, because yep. it is literally sitting underwater. Yep. Um, there, underneath this cover, for example, there's another cover which has got masses and seals in to make sure the whole system works really well. Uh, and the yoke system is completely different to the earlier versions, isn't That's it? That's right. The, yoke, the old have version a used to be a steering system, yep. as well as the yoke to support. Yep. This one now is hydraulic steering, well, full hydraulic, so you've got the rams on twins. If you have a twin set up, for example, you only have one ram on each side of the drive. Right. And a, and a connecting and a, and rod. And a connecting rod, yeah. But this particular model on, on the show stand is going to be for twins. This, so you've this got is amazing hydraulic how far advanced this has come. In, in, I mean, from when you think of when when legs first started, at where we are now with a lot all of electric and and oh, into amazing. It. Next to your left foot, for example, is actually the steering and control rounds and the, and the yeah. ECU to just to control the steering in the system itself. That's incredible. And then one of them's trim, one of them's yeah. steering. And then again, I mean, a lot of people don't realise the importance of these wires. Well, they're all about the bonding for the electrolysis issues and obviously keeping the anodes in tip top. You know, yeah. Actually, making them work the way yeah. they're designed. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive, uh, but these, uh, I, I can't emphasise, the number of times I see people who not realise these are disconnected, and then that means that part of your engine is not covered or being protected by cathodic, uh, the anodes and cathodic, cathodic protection. That's right. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that. That's absolutely amazing. Shall we go and have a look at the IPS drives? Sure. This is the, like the PS de resistance of our like. Benson, isn't it? Yep. And the technology in the... Uh, research that's gone into creating this has totally been a game changer in how to handle it both, right. I would say. It, it literally, it, it makes docking easy, it makes using the vessel easy, you can almost get rid of the, the mate who's tying up because you can do it yourself now, and it just means the boat does exactly what you want it to do with joystick uh, manoeuvrability. With these, it's it's actually pulling the boat through the water rather than... Uh, they, they pretty soon worked out that after the water's gone through the hull or past the hull and lets you go out to the drive, then the propellers are actually less efficient than you want them to be. Push, putting the propellers forwards, 30% more efficiency because they're in clean water, they're pulling you through, there's nothing in the way, and therefore you can get massive efficiencies in, and fuel saving too. So this is actually working out about 30% efficiency on, 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 a, average, on an almost a really good light average, light. about 30 to 33% efficiency. Is that against the shaft or against the... Against shaft and propeller. And propeller. Uh, and, oh, aqua drive system, aqua. yeah. Amazing. What I have noticed is, unlike the uh, aqua drive, you've, you've got uh, a seacock system. We've actually got two. You've got two. We've got one which is a water in and one which is a bypass from the exhaust system. Because not all the water can flow through the exhaust back through the drive. This is an underwater exhaust system to keep the noise down as well. Right. Okay. So that's two less holes in your boat, basically, isn't it? It's all encapsulated in the Volvo Pennant system. There are no skin fins that are needed, necessarily, for the active drive system, for the IPS system. And, and this casting is, is what? It's bronze. It is bronze. It's not gold aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely all bronze. It's, it's heavy enough to definitely be yeah. bronze, anyway. So that, that accounts for why these are so expensive to start with, I yeah. guess. But then you're buying something that's a lot more quality. Yeah, we've, we've been fitting them extensively in some of the, the large manufacturers. Princess are, are loving the vessels themselves. Yeah. They go up to um, the D13 engines now, so about wow. 13. They're called the IPS 1350s, for example, and they, they are up there in really big capacities. From a servicing point of view, obviously you've got oils That's which need to be changed. It's a specific oil for this. It's a bit expensive, but to be honest, it's a yearly job again, right. um, or every, every other year. Um, there is... On the early ones, they had to be out the water to drain down, but they've actually made big strides, and now you can suck the oil through the top. Yeah, because obviously the bigger the boat, the more costly it is to have that. Yeah, absolutely. What about the seal arrangements? Because this is quite a complicated seal, I guess, because the whole bottom panel is swiveling, The, the whole it? bottom piece does um, swivel. It's designed to shear off, hit an underwater obstruction, for example, so it saves the boat. If you hit, if you hit for example, a shaft-driven boat or an aqua-drive boat uh, with an underwater obstruction, the damage can be catastrophic and sink the boat. Yeah. These are designed that if it does, worst case scenario, hit something underwater, it will shear off and you'll be safe to get back to a port with one engine that's working, we hope. However, you're quite right, 
it is vulnerable to some impacts. Yeah. So the, the seals, how often do these need to be changed? They, they're life of the, the drive, really. So if you're looking at about 10 year lifespan on the actual seals themselves. Okay, that's, that's amazing. So there's lots of different bits of technology, and again, it's all electronic. It's all electronic steering, it's all electronic um, through the joystick system, the EVC, electronic vessel control that Bulba has. That's amazing. Well, thank you ever so much, Simon. It's been a delight to meet you, and I hope that's been quite interesting for your guys uh, to, to listen to.